If you look closely at my work, you can't see all of it, but if you really think about it, you'll see something musical. I grew up in Decatur, Illinois, a wonderful city, a thriving city at that time. My father was a minister, and my mom, mother of 10 children. I didn't realize that we were what you would think of as poor because we never felt that way. My family, uh, they were providers, just like all the families on Sunset Avenue. Anyway, very large family, very close-knit family. I owe that to my becoming an artist, you know, finding my niche. I wanted to be seen, especially under the eyes of my older brother. I, I think I became an artist at the age of seven. In middle school, I began to uh, get a little mischievous <laughs> about drawing. <laughs> Later, I applied to Southern Illinois in Carbondale. And you know, like when doors explode open, that's what it was like culturally, because uh, I had never seen that many people who looked like me, spoke like me, you played music. I mean, it was a total awakening. I raised alligators when I was <laughs> small, <laughs> uh, but I, I could never keep a roommate when I was in college because they'd all split. Uh, be <laughs> the smell of alligators and, and late at night you'd hear them jumping in the bathtub. But anyway, I did a lot of things because I was curious. Things like foundry, casting in bronze, covered it. Jewelry making, covered it. Painting, I covered it. So that was just an itch that needed to be scratched. Kind of overdid it, you know. But, heck, it was the 60s and uh, I felt free. I felt very good about life, you know. And we moved on to Chicago, believe it or not. Uh, I left Macomb and accepted a job in Chicago as a sculpture uh, teacher. And I, I stayed there 32 years. <laughs> Because my hair is Everything we know culturally and connected to entertainment and sports and all that kind of stuff came from Chicago. Harlem Renaissance in Chicago was larger than the Harlem Renaissance in New York. The impact of that period caused so much cultural richness, and that's why I built uh, Bronzeville to Harlem. That's why they called me Shine. Within Bronzeville to Harlem, there are a lot of personal things. That's what makes it alive, because these people are real. There is a small a figure of my father holding two twins in his arm, coming from St. Mary's Hospital, where my twin sister and I was born. is important. Uh, when the art becomes larger than your body, there's a certain kind of respect that happens between you and the work. Large monumental uh, sculptures uh, that we see in the cities, larger cities, uh, that was done on purpose. <laughs> For small-scale sculpture that I did, you know, on Bronzeville to Harlem, I can reach in there and grab it and pick it up. The proportions are a little strange, not so correct, but you don't care. I do what you call fine art, or um, social conscious art, because you can bend the rules, you know. 
And haven't I been doing that all my life? Music was a part of me that evolved along with uh, the art. I put a band together called the Rhythm Asus Indicator. We made records, we recorded in Nashville. Some of the most famous musicians on the planet was on that Chitlin circuit. We would drive a, a little Volkswagen bus. We couldn't go downtown and stay in hotels because most places, even if uh, you know, we're in the north, uh, were still segregated. Fortunately, we didn't feel the segregation. We were having too much fun. Unfortunately, <laughs> we should have known that was an opportunity to fight against a segregation. I've been known to be an activist. I've been known to be somewhat militant also. Uh, but like I say, things evolve. And I learned that bad feelings can hurt you. But bad feelings can also change things to create good feelings. You see, I pride myself from not being afraid of nothing. That's in my work, and I can't hide it. All of this stuff speaks another language, and not a language that's aggressive, but a, a language that puts you in front and say, don't back up. So I want my art to always remind people that um, there is positive consciousness out there. I hope that my life has touched many young kids out there. And uh, I mean, teaching this length of time, you know, 50 or something years, I, I better be good because that's a lot of people that you've impressed. You know, that's a lot of people that remember your personality. And uh, I just hope they become good people. I can draw and paint anything I like, you know? And I marvel at the power that that creates. I marvel at the fact that it does make a difference and it changes. And if you believe in yourself enough, you'll keep, you'll stay on that.